Well, Norwich City are in free-for-all. Three defeats in the last three takes Norwich City to 17th in the championship table, just three points above 21st place. Um, this time a 3-1 defeat to Sunderland, having taken the lead in the game. And you now have to simply question David Wagner's future at the football club. Look, it's been a monumentally bad week for, for the Canaries. I don't think that can be underestimated. Um, it all begun with a, well, a, a positive 45 minutes against Leeds United where we went 2-0 up. We lost that game 3-2. One of the most embarrassing performances of the season in a season full of them uh, against Middlesbrough on Tuesday. And then a, a truly pathetic performance against Sunderland after putting themselves in a fairly positive position. This is crisis point for David Wagner. Whether he is sacked is, is another discussion, but this Norwich City side are only heading in one direction, and that's down in this table at the moment. Um, lost for words about just the, the complete and utter drop-off from this side. I think... You know, I expected this team to finish mid-table. I think most people probably did. There are a couple of optimistic Norwich fans that thought we could maybe challenge for the playoffs. And to be fair to them, having seen us in the first five games, you you could there, there was a reason to be optimistic. Sargent was scoring goals. The, the new signings looked like fairly shrewd additions. Um, but since the injuries to both Barnes and Sargent, Norwich City seemingly don't know how to defend, they don't know how to score goals. Um, and it's gone from bad to worse. Norwich City have now conceded the second most amount of goals, or the joint top, sorry, a most amount of goals alongside Huddersfield. Um, hello to all of the new Huddersfield fans watching. I'm sure a few of you have come over from my, from Twitter after seemingly got in a battle with, with Huddersfield fans, thanks to you and Roberts. Um, and yeah, look, I think we're in the bottom three in terms of the form table if you take the last 10 games in isolation. There were changes going into this Sunderland game. Uh, the, the most bold, I think, of them were young Kellen Fisher coming into the side to, repl to replace Jack Stacey. That was a surprising one. Yes, Stacey wasn't great against Middlesbrough, but I actually think he's been one of our better players. Fisher, young, clearly, you know, some degree of talent in there but this lad was playing non-league football last season for Bromley um, to put him up against Jack Clark was a bold decision it didn't work um, there are other changes Forshaw came in actually wasn't too disappointed to see that name on the team sheet he was poor um, didn't solidify the midfield whatsoever Huang came in Actually, a really tidy finish and probably one of the few players that comes out of the, the performance against Sunderland with any form of credit. And Christian Fasnacht, who didn't have his best game, hit the post, missed a good chance in the first half. Look, all of the discussion will be around David Wagner. This is where I stand. I think he's now in a position that's untenable. I don't see how he progresses this team forward. We've had long enough. We've had what, just under a year. Um Norwich are in a worse position now than we were under Dean Smith. The football certainly hasn't improved. Um, he's had uh, his own players and he's brought his own players in. And I think we're far enough into this season now to to see just about where Norwich City are. I think the start um, was really positive and I think we saw some, some goodness in that. But we were so quick to work out and we haven't been able to transition. I don't think I've seen one game this season where Wagner has had the ability to change a game for the for positive reason within a match. I mean, the substitutions today, once again, were, well, baffling. Um, absolutely baffling. Johnny Rowe came off. Um, you had Gibson come off for Eder. So you were then kind of two up front and light defensively. Um, the... The, the, the defensive errors continue. I mean, Duffy scored a, a fair few own goals now. It was a an own goal for the first. It was a cataclysmic error for the third that led to the Sunderland penalty. He has been fortunate to keep his place in this side and Wagner persists. I'm not sure what else he needs to do um, to get dropped from this from this side. And the, I think the concern is that the few positives in this side, Johnny Rowe and, and Gabriel Sarah are probably, uh, based on current kind of scenes, won't be here 
in January, and then you look at this side and go, blimey, where you know where is the talent? I guess you've got Sergeant Barnes coming back into the team, but it's not really the attacking areas that are the issue at the moment. It's just the sheer amount of goals that we're conceding. It's 27 goals we've conceded um, in 14 games. As I said, that's the joint most in the league along with um, Huddersfield. I mean, you look at the teams in and around us, Birmingham, Bristol City, Watford, Millwall, the most that they've conceded out of all of those sides are 18. We've conceded nine more than any team in and around us. I mean, even bottom team Sheffield Wednesday have conceded five goals less than us. The, the concern for me is, is nothing's changing. You know, there's no reason to be optimistic that this form will change. We knew coming into this week that this was a really challenging one. I think Leeds, Middlesbrough, Sunderland away, three difficult games, but you still expect to pick something up. I mean, this Norwich side isn't completely... Um, you know, on it, on it, on the floor, and when it when it comes to quality, I mean, you've you've got Yanulis in there. I think is a really talented player. Gabriel Sara, arguably one of the championship's best midfielders. Johnny Rowe has been superb this season. The the team on paper, I think, are better than than a lot of championship sides, and yet David Wagner is getting absolutely nothing out of it. The the question I keep getting asked is, Jack, do you think David Wagner will be sacked? And I must say, I don't think he will be. You've got a lot of change above him. You've got Ben Napper coming into the role. You've also got this really strange handover period where Stuart Webber will still be at the football club handing over duties to Ben Napper. I don't think that needs to happen. And, and, I, and I'm concerned that in that period of time, Ben Napper won't make the decisions he maybe thinks he needs to with with uh, with Webber still there. But it does come to a point where Norris City need to make a decision. Now, they might deem... The next few games against Blackburn, Cardiff and QPR, even Watford, as three games where you could possibly be winning. But even so, I think Norwich City need to make changes before this gets really, really messy. I mean, let's not get too drastic here, but you're suddenly looking further towards the relegation zone than you are top six. Um, we're certainly closer to the relegation zone than we are the top six. Um, scary times. Scary times for Norwich City. Uh, you just wonder how we've got in this mess. Uh, you know, the, the the term transition keeps getting banded about. I'm not overly sure. I don't think anyone's explained to me as of yet where we're exactly transitioning to at the moment. This is a side transitioning to the bottom half of the championship at quite a rate of knots. So look, it's tough to see how David Wagner... Um, brings this team forward in any real capacity. Do I think he will be sacked? No, I don't. Do I think he needs to be sacked? Yes, I do. That's my stance on it. Um, Norwich City have gone down 3-1 th at the hands of Sunderland. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. I mean, oh, my goodness, so much to break down. Well, the podcast will be back on Monday. Um, until then, let me know what you think. This is another really dark day for Norwich City. Sunderland 3, Norwich City 1.